8.5 is solving exponential equations. This is part of the advanced functions course using the Nelson's textbook. So um, today, first, I want to talk about um, some different examples. It's the only way to really see um, what you should be doing with these questions. They're all Some of them are all a little trickier than others, and I'll cover all the ones that I think you will find um, tricky. And hopefully by the time we finish this, you'll be an ace at it. Okay, so let's look at the first one here. We have 2 to the x equals 1.065. Now, you probably did some of these last year um, in grade 11. Maybe your teacher showed you a trick for solving exponential equations. And that is to, um, you could use trial and error, right? You could start plugging in numbers for x to see when you would get close to 1.065. Or the easiest way is to take the log of both sides. Now remember when you take the log, it's a log of base 10, which is what your calculator can evaluate for you. So if I take the log of both sides, I would have log of 2 to the x is equal to the log of 1.065. Now the log of 1.065 is just a number, and so is the log of 2. But we have to do something with this x, and if you remember your logarithm rules, you'll know that you can write this as x log 2. So let's write that first, x log 2 is equal to the log of 1.065. And now I think you'll see exactly what you should do here, is divide both sides by log 2, and you're going to be able to solve for x just like that. So we shall put that up here, and you need to get out your trusty calculator, and it's just log base 10, so 1.065 divided by log of 2 and you get 0 0.0908. So 0 0.091 would be a decent answer, approximately 0 0.091. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's take a look at this word problem. It says, Michelle, a non-smoker, has a cup of tea at 6 p.m. When will the amount of caffeine in her blood be less than two milligrams? And then you're given some information. Tea has a half-life of 5.5 uh, hours in an adult non-smoker and it has 62.5 approximately milligrams of caffeine. So you set up your equation and you probably remember that the amount at time t is equal to the initial amount so we write it as a sub zero and we're using half-life formula so we're going to multiply pi by 0 0.05 and it's going to be time passed divided by the half-life so all you have to do now is fill in the information that you've been given. You want it to, to know when it will be less than 2 milligrams. So that's your amount at time t. You're solving for time. You have the half-life and you have the initial amount of 62.5. So I put that in here, 0 0.5 to the power of t, which is what we're trying to solve for, and the half-life, which is 5.5. Remember, we're dealing with hours here. So now in order to solve for that, the first thing we would do is divide through by 62.5. So we get these two terms isolated. So I'm going to have 2 divided by 62.5 is equal to 0 0.5 to the t over 5.5. Now you can see all you have to do is take the log. So if you divide 2 by, let's do 2 divided by 62.5, and I get 0 0.032. So I'm going to have the log of 0 0.032 is equal to, I, I'm going to write it out the long way first of all, the log of 0 0.5 to the t over 5.5. And you know that this can be written in the front. So that's going to give me the log of 0 0.032. I'm going to divide both sides by this. So divided by the log. 0.5 and that's going to be equal to t over 5.5. So now all you have to do is take the log of 0.032 divided by the log of 0.5 equals that and I'm going to multiply it by 5.5 to get time. So I get 27 t is approximately equal to 27.3 and that would be an hours. So if the teacher asks for when, you're not going to say 
in 27.3 hours. You should say 27 hours and how many minutes? So 0.3, let's just do 0.3 times 60. That will give us minutes. So about 27 hours and 18 minutes later. So in other words, she's going, if she can't go to sleep with less than two milligrams and she's going to be awake for a very, very long time, 27 hours. That's a whole day gone by. Okay, let's flip over here to some other examples. A little dark on the screen here. Let's see if I can lighten it up a bit. Oops, making it darker. Sorry about this. Just want to make sure it's the best experience for you. Okay, so we have 4 to the 2x equals 1 over 16. This is question 1f. That's what these little numbers here are for. So if you have the Nelson textbook, this might be one of your homework questions. So when you're working with questions such as this, you try to find a common base. So you know that 16 can be written with a base of 4. So let's do that first. 4 to the 2x is equal to 1 over 16 is 4 to the negative 2 right? 4 to the negative 2, 4 squared, and the negative 1 over it. Okay, so once the bases are the same like this, then you can equate the exponents, right? Because 4 to this is equal to 4 to this, and this is this. So 2x is equal to minus 2, and x is equal to negative 1. That was very much easier than you probably thought it would be. Okay, the next one. 4 to the x over 3 equals 30. Well, again, I have no idea. I mean, you could spend a lot of time doing some trial and error here, or you can say, let's take the log of both sides, which is the best trick in the book for logarithms. And remember that the log of a number is just a number. So this can go to the front now. So I have x over 3 is equal to, and I'm just going to divide log 30 by log 6 here to get rid of that. And remember, this is not the same as log 5. Do these separately. So x is going to be equal to log 30 divided by log 6 times 3. So log 30 divided by log, can I say it was 6, equals that. And then I'm going to multiply by 3. Right? So multiply by 3 times 3, times 3, times 3, and I get about 5.69. So I've got some uh, some rounding up going on there. Depends on how many decimals. Let's do 3, 5.695. That'll make everybody happy. Okay, number 5 here. We have 9 to the 2x plus 1 equals 81 times 27 to the x. So you're trying to find a common base so 9 looked good until we hit 27, right? It can't be, 27 can't be written with a base of 9, but they could all be written with a base of 3. So that's what you're going to do. So 9 is the same as 3 squared. Let's do it in a couple of steps here, just so you don't miss anything on the way. So 81 is 3 to the power of 4, and 27 is 3 to the power of 3, and it's still to the x. Okay, so let's fix this up here. So Power to a power, you multiply, so that's 3 to the 4x plus 2 is equal to, so this is power to the power again, so this is 3 to the 4th, and this is 3 to the x, and I'm multiplying them together. So what do you do when you, when you multiply numbers together? You add them, right? So this is going to be 3 to the 4 plus 3x. Okay, don't kind of squish them all together. Don't multiply them all together. So this is 3, three to the 3x, 3 to the 4th. Multiplying bases are the same. I add the exponents. And this is power to a power, so I expanded them. And now I have the same bases, so I can equate the exponents. So I get 4x plus 2 is equal to 4 plus 3x. I bring the 3x over here. becomes 1x. And the 4 minus 2 gives me 2. Now you could check this, right? You could go back and, and plug it in here. So is 9 to the power of 5 the same as 81 times 27 to the power of 2? And you should get the right answer. Okay, number 6. Kind of squish these up a bit, didn't we? Okay. This one, 3 to the 2x minus 5 to times 3 to the x 
equals negative 6. Now, for this question, you have to remember that 3 to the 2x, that's the same as 3 to the x. Now, it's multiplied, so it's 3x squared, right? Because if I did x times 2, I would get 2x, power to a power. And I think if you see it written this way first, you'll see that this is just a quadratic equation. Right? Here's my, like, th say this was x. x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now, if you want to, um, you can say let 3 to the x equal x, just so it looks like something more happy for you, right? So if I have x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0, and I asked you to factor that, <coughs> you'd say, come on, Miss Howard, this is like grade 10 work. What multiplies to 6 and adds to negative 5? And you would say x minus 3 times x minus 2. But x is equal to 3 to the x, so I have 3 to the x minus 3 equals 0, and 3 to the x minus 2 is equal to 0. So that gives me 3 to the x. When is 3 to the x equal 3? Well, that would be, that would be x is 1. All right, that's an easy one. And where is 3 to the x equal 2? Well, that's where you're going to have to take the log. Okay, so we can't, we can't solve that one without taking the log of both sides. So I say the log of 3 to the x equals log 2. x log 3 equals log 2. And finally, I'm going to squish this up here. I would say x equals log 2 divided by log 3. And you can do that on your calculator again. Don't you love my pink calculator cover? It was sent to me by an admirer. I'm very thrilled. Say 0 0.6309, approximately 0 0.6309. And there you go. That's how you would solve that. That gives you two solutions, x equals 1 or x equals approximately this one. Okay, now the last one and the one that just looks impossible to do is this one here. So I have 2 to the x plus 2 minus 2 to the x equals 24. And you're going to say, oh, how does this make any sense? There's, there's a whole group of these in your homework assignment. I forget the number. Let me see if I can find it very quickly for you. Um, number 8. It's all like from number 8 in your homework. <coughs> you get one of them, you're going to get all of them. Okay, so the first thing you need to understand is, what is this? Can I rewrite this somehow? 2 to the x plus 2. So you should recognize that if I'm adding, that means this really came from this, right? 2 to the x, and what else here? 2 to the x times 2 squared, right? So if I did x plus 2, that would give me this. This is the same thing. Minus 2 to the x equals 24. So this one is all about your favorite factoring. Okay, you have to factor. So when you see it this way, I'm, I'm pretty sure right away you'd say, oh, 2 to the x is a factor here. So I can take out a 2 to the x, and I'm left with 2 squared minus 1. Right, expand. Look, you get that, you get that. Because when you look here, like it looks like, oh, could I write everything with a base 2? No, 24 can't be written base 2. But look what I've got here now. I've got 2 to the x times 3 equals 24, 2 to the x equals 8, 24 divided by 3, and 8 can be written as a base 2, it's 2 cubed. So that means that x is equal to 3. Okay, so like I said, there's a whole bunch of these in your, um, your homework assignment. They work the same way, everyone. Once you've done one of them, you, you figure out this, right? Let me put it in red because... This is the trick to the question here, recognizing that 2 to the x plus 2 is 2 to the x times 2 squared and factoring out this 2 to the x, and then you'll be on your way. So go and try some more from um, number 8 on page 486. 
page 486, if you've got Nelson Advanced Functions textbook. And that's your lesson on solving exponential equations. Um, I hope you've subscribed by now and, you know, give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying the videos. It's kind of a um, little bit of an ego boost for me, but at the same time, I'm putting an awful lot of work into this for you. And it would be nice um, to see my channel develop even more. Thanks for your support. Bye-bye.